Thank you. It's truly an honor to be here. I look forward to this event every year. I think most of us here know that political dissent in general and animal rights activism especially face a dual threat of spying and infiltration, both by the government and by private corporations. Spying such as corporations such as Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, introduces new fears that undermine First Amendment freedoms with great impunity. Infiltration provides the government and the private sector with an unfair advantage in the face of legitimate and important political grievances. It splinters people's movements as undercover agents divide and erode trust between adherents of political causes. We recently witnessed the impact of government and corporate collusion and spying, along with brute police force during the Occupy movement. As OWS gained momentum in perhaps the single largest surge of protesters since the Vietnam War, police and local government's response reflected growing animosity toward activists in general. In sharp contrast, the creative forms of protests that occupiers engaged in and the many encampments, large and small, that sprung to life fostered a sense of community that has long been missing in this country. But occupiers met with widespread unconstitutional police actions, shining a spotlight on practices that have been gaining momentum over the years, but that have not always been captured in the media or, or that strongly in the public's eye. For example, we saw over 7,000 Occupy-related arrests this past year. We saw helicopters for a 20-person march, a fortress erected around Wall Street, midnight raids to keep journalists out for blocks, city council members with identification kept out, arrests of citizen journalists, overcharging to keep people in custody for long periods of time, false arrests that threats to officer safety were existed, the photographing of disorderly conduct arrestees and other offenses for which individuals are usually not photographed. The main goal was to clear the streets, to intimidate people, and to deal with the consequence of police breaking the law later down the road. We saw officers not enforcing the law, but setting as a priority the monitoring of political activism. And made public at the height of the Occupy encampments was the extent to which big business does partner with public law enforcement, not just in spying, but also in handing over huge bankrolls of money to support police initiatives. The goals of maximizing profits and stifling consent often converge, creating a corporate interest in facilitating such crackdowns on political activity. In one New York lawsuit, brought on behalf of occupiers, plaintiffs allege that private corporations played a pivotal role in curtailing free speech. They contended that an agreement existed between state actors, the city of New York, the MTA, and its agents, Mayor Michael Bloomberg and Police Commissioner Raymond Kelly, along with private corporations, JP Morgan, Brookfield Properties, and others, to deprive protesters of their constitutional right to access public spaces on private defendants' property, for which the defendants were given tax breaks. The complaint alleged that J.P. Morgan and the police department worked in concert to deny occupiers access to public space at one Chase Manhattan Plaza. Shortly after police barricades were removed from the square, a private fence was erected, indicating a collaborative effort to restrict access. It was under this paradigm of militarized force and private public collusion that the Occupy movement sparked a singular challenge, reawakening a passive public to the social inequities now synonymous with big business and government. Documents obtained through FOIA requests show vast monitoring, surveillance, and information sharing between the Department of Homeland Security and local, uh, local authorities in response to the Occupy movement. The DC-based Partnership for Civil Justice, the National Lawyers Guild, and Michael Moore requested these documents. Heavily redacted, 
they still suggest a, mi a massive spying network supported by anti-terrorism funding that mobilized thousands of federal and local agents to monitor social justice movements. For example, DHS coordinated with Portland, Oregon on the eviction of Occupy encampments and talked about obtaining, quote, soundly based evidence of public health and safety concerns, a pretext we've seen for years used to infringe First Amendment activities. So they'll close down a convergence base citing safety concerns when none exist. DHS's National Operations Center collected identity and contact information on a group of Dallas occupiers protesting the Bank of America. And DHS's significant incident report covered a meeting at Niagara Falls in late December by a very small group of Occupy Wall Street members in US and Canada. Accompanying the kinds of infringement we saw during Occupy is a rash of new federal laws as Odette referred to, that greatly expand the executive branch's authority to track individuals based on their political ideology. And we know that animal rights activists and environmental activists are at the top of that list. Ostensibly, to further intelligence-seeking efforts, the government goes to enormous lengths to collect highly personal data, from surveillance of email and phone communications, to creating databases of DNA from individuals arrested but not convicted to convert acquisition of usage records from libraries and internet service providers. Big business turns over customer information without blinking an eye whenever the government asks for it. Vast data mining of personal data is burgeoning rapidly and until recently without much public awareness. The pervasiveness of spying, both high tech and by using age old practices of government informants and grand juries, is impacting protest and activists on many levels. Technological advances and trade surveillance markets have profoundly altered the nature of spying and the public's tacit acceptance of mass surveillance. Many trappings of the mid-20th century spying apparatus still exist, but the context has changed. Attorney General John Mitchell authorized secret wiretapping during the Nixon administration because, as he put it, he found it necessary to protect the nation from, quotes, attempts of domestic organizations to attack and subvert the government. This national security rationale still persists, but domestic dissenters now are labeled terrorists, and modern spying machinery is built into nearly every daily transaction that we conduct, large and small. Government agencies, as you know, target leaders of political movements. They still employ grand juries to search for evidence of political affiliation, to intimidate people. They stigmatize group of groups of activists, and they use the mass media to denigrate demonstrators reinforce negative stereotypes, or publicize high-profile arrests on charges that very frequently are later dropped for lack of evidence. When movements such as these become casualties of government and corporate spying and disruption, civic trust is undermined, vital political debates are stifled, and there are far-reaching societal consequences for us all. As the world's superpower, this nation wields major influence on other countries. By punishing domestic dissenters, the United States sends a signal to others that we no longer cherish and abide by First Amendment protections. Countries around the globe are mirroring our version of the war on terrorism by prosecuting their own political opponents, religious groups, and separatists. As activists, we must continue to ignite anger in the hearts and minds of Americans. We must not let the rest of the country slip into complacency as this government wages flagrant abuses on our environment and on animals who are victimized daily by corporate interests and human selfishness. If we allow campaigns of disinformation to continue, we are complicit in the deliberate horrors perpetrated in the name of empire. We owe a debt of gratitude to the thousands of individuals who joined to make the Occupy movement serve as a wake-up call for the rest of the country 
and indeed for the world. Thank you.